if I made a quick video just showing people how I use the Kadamo Mask 1 bit masking synthesizer to make patches. I see a few comments in reviews and on forums about the user interface of this synth. People are a bit surprised by the choices made here and I think people think it would be difficult or frustrating to use this to make sounds. I appreciate that user interface is a very personal matter. Uh, for me personally, I find it a very quick and easy to use interface and I've used this synthesizer to make a lot of sounds, some of which are available to download for free on the Kadamo website. Uh, I, those sounds are some of the sounds I used in the album I made exclusively using the synthesizer called Masquerade uh, and all of those sounds obviously were made using the synthesizer so you can probably gather from that that I'm quite a fan of the synth and the interface um, so what I'm going to do this afternoon is just make a quick video showing how I make a very simple drum kit on this synth it's just very simple using uh, one kick, one snare and uh, but hopefully taking you through that will show you how the interface works so when you dial up an init patch on the mask one it just comes up with a single oscillator oscillator one which is playing mask shape seven I'm not sure if you can see this on the panel but printed here are some of the most useful mask shapes and their numbers sine wave. There. Okay, I then go into the envelope section by pushing the envelope button. We've got level 20, which is the default for oscillator 1. Attack 0. Uh, decay is 6, which is quite a useful value, which is kind of preset there. You can't hear the decay at the moment because the sustain is on 15, which is the maximum, so it goes from 0 to 15. For my purposes, I think we want the click at least at the front end, so I'll leave that on. The next thing I would do then is go to the pitch envelope. So in pitch, we have two values we have the start, so you can go positive or negative there, and then you also have the speed. So adding just a bit of So uh, I would also now add just a bit of noise. So I'd change the level to one for the noise. Take the sustain off. Add a bit of release just to match what we've got on the body of the kick. Uh, the noise, even though it's only on level one, is quite loud compared to the oscillator one sine wave sound, so I would increase the level of the sine wave sound a bit. I would also, coming out of the envelope parameters, 
in the noise, you've got the frequency level there, so you can just, by reducing it, I would go with 120 just to take a bit of the top end off. If you go all the way down to one, then you can get a very crunchy sound. But what I want, I will just go to 120. And then the next thing I do is go into the filter settings. So by default, the filter is set into low pass mode. There are other modes you can select, but we want low pass for this purpose. So we're on the cutoff 127. Let's reduce that. And there, that is the kick made. Now to make the snare, I'll go to the next available init patch, so we're up in 31. Again, we default to single oscillator on mask 7. Let's turn that right down for now and turn the noise up for the snare. Takes the stain off. Just a bit of release. Um, the other thing I'll do is just go back into oscillator one, raise the level, but take the sustain right down, take the decay right down. So now if I just play the oscillator one, you can hear we've just got a, a click. over time. I'll use it just to make the snare. That LFO effect will just fade out quite quickly after the attack section of the sound. That just adds a bit of attack to that. Okay, then we'll go into filter, change the mode to High pass, reduce the cutoff to the middle value, say 63. And then I'll go to tracking, put it on 100. There you can see that depending where we play the keyboard, we get a different sound. So let's save this. Uh, Okay. So now we have a kick on a sound 30 and a snare sound 31. If we want to play them both at the same time, what we can do is this is what I do go to the kick sound, save it as 32 as a new sound. 
change the name to kit. Okay. Then I go to split, select 31, which was the snare sound. And now we have the kick down here and we have the snare here. So in the split section, you've got a few parameters. Semi will let you change, you know, how high or low up the keyboard. The split sound is playing. Leave it there for now. Next is balance. So using, doing this, you can make the snare or the kick sound louder. Next parameter is pan. Now I use this. So I can play the kick and the snare at the same time, but going out of the left and right channels separately of the mask one, so I can record them separately. So by increasing that value, that parameter to seven, you should now just be hearing the kick in the left channel and the snare in the right channel. Then we go back to balance just to make sure they're about the same. Okay, and now the final step I would generally do is just add a bit of effects. So you've got two effects. Effects one is uh, chorus, 16 different types of chorus, 16 different types of uh, distortion, 16 bit crush effects, and 16 ring modulated. I tend to use the distortion for drums. Uh, when you have a split sound like this, the distortion only affects the kick. So, <laughs> there you hear, you're just turning it up a bit. You can hear the effect it has on the kick, but not the snare. So let's... So I hope that's been useful, just showing you how quickly and easily you can use this interface to patch on. If, uh, if you did find the video useful, please like and subscribe. And uh, if there is demand for it, I might make future videos showing how to make other sounds. I find this synth very versatile. You can use it to make leads, pads, <coughs> whatever sounds you want, really. Uh, and uh, so yeah, hopefully see you on the next video. Thanks. Thanks for